Hi, my name is Matan Kraus. I'm going to speak about an O of log n to the three halves parallel time population protocol for the majority problem. This is a joint work with Stav Binun, Stevi Kopolovich, and Eli Porat. In the population protocol model, there are, n, there are n agents or nodes that interact with each other in a pairwise manner. There is a scheduler that on each round uh, selects two nodes uh, uniformly at random. So for example, for the first round, these two nodes are selected. And for the second round, these two nodes, and so on and so forth. On each round, the two nodes can observe each other state and update its own state accordingly. In the majority problem, each node has an initial color, black or white. We want all the nodes to report the initial majority colors. So for example, here there were eight nodes that are black and five white nodes. So the majority color is black. Therefore, we want all the nodes to report that the majority initial color was black. Efficiency in population protocol is measured by the number of interactions until stabilization, which is an interaction where the configuration is that all the nodes agree on the initial majority color. Moreover, they cannot reach a configuration which is wrong, which means not all the nodes agree on the initial majority color. This can only be bounded with high probability and in expectation, of course, since the rounds are chosen random. On each round, the two nodes are chosen random. Also, we want to discuss about the number of states per node. Typically, we want at most logarithmic number of states uh, a node. Here is a graph that summarizes some of the results uh, we have. Um, we will start with, an, with the ambassador protocol, which is only O of one, o of one states per node. However, it's a very, very slow protocol. We will start with it at the warm up. Then we will proceed to Bilke et al's uh, protocol, which is much faster. However, it takes log square n states per node. We will kind of skip Alistair et al uh, states improvement and go straight to Bernd Brink et al uh, contribution. We will finish with our new protocol. So with the warm up, let's start with the ambassador protocol. In the ambassador protocol, there are four possible states. As we said, only of one state per node. It can be either big and black, small and black, big and white, small and white. All the nodes start as big nodes. The only rule that, this, that uh, has two big nodes uh, as an input is the first rule. So the first rule says that when two different color node, big nodes uh, interact, they both get small. By the first rule, after enough interactions, there will be no more minority big nodes. Therefore, however, there will always be at least one majority big node. This at least one majority big nodes will eventually color all the minority small nodes in the majority color. So in this case, the big majority nodes that's left in the population colored all the small nodes in black. 
The complexity of the ambassador protocol is as follows. We have O of one stage per node, which is a Cartesian product of the number of colors and the number of sizes. However, this is a very slow protocol. We can only bound it by O of n squared log n interactions with high probability and expectation. Therefore, we move on to the Birk et al. Uh, protocol. They used the cancellation duplications uh, framework. The idea is uh, that the population has O of log n phases. Uh, the protocol has O of log n phases. Each phase uh, has theta of log n, uh, log n interactions per node. So, each phase is composed by two stages. The cancellation stage, where two different color nodes cancel each other into empty color nodes. So here gray uh, represents an empty color node. And in the duplication stage, a color node can duplicate into an empty color node. For example, a white node in the duplication stage that interact with an empty color node in the duplication stage, mm, colors the empty color node in white. This happens only one per stage, only once per stage. Let's analyze this. So after a cancellation stage, one can prove that most of the nodes are empty. Moreover, in the duplication stage, all the colored nodes duplicate. Therefore, the difference between the majority and the minority has doubled. For example, if we had three white nodes and one black node in the beginning of the du duplication stage, we will have six white nodes and two black nodes at the end of the duplication stage. So the difference has doubled from two to four. Of course, after all log n phases, after log n phases, there will be no more minority color nodes as the difference is n. An important note it is that the synchronization here is very important. On each phase, we count, we, we have theta of log n interactions per node. So each node uh, has to count to theta of log n. We want all the nodes to be in on the same stage. So when, so how do we keep them synchronized? How do we keep all the nodes on the same stage? Like in the balls and beans problem, uh, we can see some arguments from that problem that shows that the, uh, that the nodes are relatively synchronized. Also, all the articles uh, used some more uh, synchronization mechanisms uh, to keep the, uh, the counters of the, of the nodes count uh, tight together. I just want to point out that in our protocol, we don't need any other mechanism except from the basic uh, counter method. The complexity of this protocol is as follows. We have O of n times log square n interactions, since we have n nodes. Each node has log n phases, and on each phase we have log n steps. The number of states per node is Cartesian product of the log n phases and the log n steps in the phase, which yields O of log square n states per node. Altar et al. showed a method to reduce the number of states to O of log n. The idea is briefly to, to divide the population into clocks and walkers. Clocks will be responsible of the steps in a phase, and walkers will only have to count um, 
the phases. Let's proceed to Ben Wilkin uh, et al. Uh, contribution. They have shorter phases. Each phase is, has only theta of log n to the one minus a interactions. Um, the problem is that now the phases are too short. So we can't guarantee anymore that with high probability, all the color nodes uh, duplicate. Therefore, they introduce, they introduce the out of sync and out of sync node, which is a node that didn't manage to, to participate in the duplication during a uh, duplication stage of a phase. The solution is to add a catch-up phase, a long catch-up phase, after every log n to the a uh, phases. In the catch-up phase, an out-of-sync node can, uh, can duplicate sufficiently. We call a sequence of uh, log to the a n phases and the additional catch-up phase an epoch. So here is a scheme of the protocol. Uh, the first row is an epoch that starts with a log n to the a short regular phases. By regular, I mean cancellation duplication phase. An additional a long set of log n interactions per node catch up phase. Notice that the number of interactions per node on an epoch is theta of log n since the catch-up phase has theta of log n interactions and all the short regular phases have theta of log n interactions. Moreover, the number of epochs in the protocol is log n to the one minus a. Why that? We need log n, phase, for log n regular phases for the whole uh, protocol. On each phase, we have log n to the a to the a phases. So the number of epochs is log n to the one minus a. Some more details about the protocol. Uh, we want to bound the number of duplicates needed to be done in the catch-up phase. In a catch-up phase at the end of the epoch. So what is the number of duplicates needed to be done? Uh, the probability for a node to become out of sync on each regular short phase is at most the expression in the parenthesis, which we will discuss uh, later. The number of nodes is of course n. So this is the number of out of sync nodes on each phase. This is uh, an upper bound with high probability and expectation. Log to the a n is the number of phases, and two to the log to the a n is the worst case uh, number of duplication per out of sync node. Why is that? So, for example, the worst case for a node to get out of sync is on the first short regular phase. So it should have duplicated into two nodes on the first regular phase, four nodes on the second, eight nodes on the third, and two to the log n to the a nodes uh, for the last short regular phase on an epoch. So it needs to do that many duplications in the worst case in the catch-up phase. This number is small o of n uh, for a at most one third. Brian Duke et al. proved that if we have only small o of n uh, duplications to do in the catcher phase, with high probability, this will be done. We, they will all uh, duplicate sufficiently and back and get back. Uh, synchronized. They will be synchronized again. 
So after each epoch, all the nodes are synchronized again. The complexity of this protocol is all of log n phases, which is all of log to the one minus a n epochs, which is all of n log n log to the pi thirds n interactions. The number of states is all of log squared n, and again we can reduce it. We can reduce it to all of log n by distributing the information between the clocks and walkers. By, by Alistair et al. So let's proceed to our new protocol. The idea is to notice the reason for a node to be out of sync. There are two reasons, the short phase reason and the deviation reason. The short phase reason is that a node didn't find an empty color node in all the, the uh, the interactions in the duplication stage. The probability to, to not interact with, uh, with an empty color is constant, since we said that most of the nodes are empty color nodes. So it's constant, constant to the power of the number of interactions in the, in the duplication stage which is theta of log to the one minus a n. So this is the probability uh, to get out of sync due to the short phase reason. Another reason to get out of sync is because the counter is too high or too low. So for example, when most of the nodes uh, get to the duplication uh, stage, the node has a uh, a counter that is in a farther away uh, phase, in the next phase, or, in a, or, or to the opposite, in a previous phase. Therefore, it cannot duplicate uh, with all the other nodes. So this is the deviation reason. The counter is too far away from the average. We will want to uh, discuss that reason. And we, we want to uh, have a smaller probability. We just want to make the two be one. So how do we do that? How do we have n over two to the theta of log to the one minus a and out of thick nodes due to the deviation reason? We will see later, but if we'll, if we'll do it, the expected number of duplications in the catch-up phase is this expression, which is smaller of n for a at most half, and therefore the number of interactions uh, in the whole protocol will be n times uh, log to the 1.5 n uh, interactions. What is the trick? Use the power of two choices counter. So in in Bernbeck et al. Uh, protocol, when two uh, nodes in, uh, interact, they both uh, increment their counters. So you can see here, both uh, nodes have uh, incremented their counters. However, uh, by other et al., we use the power of two choices, where only the smaller counter uh, node uh, increment its counter. So you, you can see that only x uh, become x plus one, but the x plus c counter stays x plus c. Uh, Bernbeck et al. Uh, proved uh, that the number of nodes uh, whose counter is at least omega of log to the one minus a n away from the average is the desired expression we discussed before. Notice that omega of log n to the one minus a means we are a stage away from the average. So most, of, the vast majority of the nodes are very close to the average and are not stage away. So 
So the complexity, as we said before, is O of n times log to the three halves n interactions. And again, it's log square n stays per node. However, with uh, Alita et al uh, uh, method of dividing the population into workers and clocks, we can reduce the number of states per node to O of log n. I just want to point out that the only, that I want to explain why, but only the clocks need to use the power of two choices. The workers can count uh, phases, can count phases regularly. So only the clocks use the power of two choices um, method. Another uh, problem we want to address is symmetric interactions. What happens in case of a tie if both counters is X? So if we think of interactions as an interaction between an initiator and responder, this is not a problem, just increment the initiator. However, we want to the interactions to be symmetric. We don't want to deal with initiator and responder. So uh, our solution is that the clocks will execute the last strategy by blocking, not a regular power of two, since we have no way how to break a symmetry. Uh, we will uh, execute the left strategy by blocking. What is the left strategy by blocking? So let's talk about the balls and beans setting. Uh, half of the beans are left, are, are in group left, and half of the beans are in, are in group right. On each allocation, one, pick for, uh, one bin from left and one uh, bin from right are chosen, and the ball is allocated in the bin with fewer balls, just like in Azar et al. regular power of two choices. Uh, method. However, in case of a tie, we, we, we allocate the ball in the bin from group left. We proved that this strategy has the same properties, just as the regular power of two choices strategy. So as I said, the clocks will implement the, the left strategy. So half of the clocks will be on the left group, half of them will be on the right group. Um, we do so by uh, interactions of different color nodes. So the black will be a left uh, clock and the white will be right uh, clock. And they all execute the left strategy. Uh, we just want to point out that when two uh, nodes from the same group uh, interact, we just ignore the inter this interaction. So when two left uh, clocks interact uh, with the counters X and Y, they stay with counter X and Y. So overall, the complexity of our protocol is O, o of N times log to the three halves N interactions and O of log N states per node. Thank you very much.